Welcome to Wyalusing, Pennsylvania, epicenter of hydrofracking. I'm Jay Wilcox, and this is From the Front Lines. Today we're located at a railroad transfer station where crystalline silica sand is offloaded onto large trucks, known around here as sand cans. This transfer station is located on a floodplain within a mile of three schools, 200 feet from a daycare center, and is directly on US Highway 6. Although attempts are made to control the release of this atmospheric material, inevitably, clouds of fine particles are dispersed. I asked environmental scientist Dr. Yuri Gorby to explain what crystalline silica sand is. The material that they were offloading from those trucks on, uh, from the train cars onto the trucks uh, is crystalline silica sand. This material is used as a propant in the, uh, to prop open the fractures that are made during the hydraulic fracturing process. Crystalline silica sand comes with its own material safety data sheet, commonly referred to as MSDS. The material safety data sheet lists the hazards associated with compounds or materials that are used uh, in laboratory settings and on um, occupational sites. Also with me today is Wyalusing resident Joe Shavinsky. Joe's a retired UAW health and safety inspector. Unions weren't start because of wages and benefits, but because of the health benefits. Primarily, the travesty that happened in silica mining. So how it applied here with the children and uh, the exposures, uh, I had put a call in to see if it was right, uh, see if there was anything that could be done for stopping it when I seen the dust, and the answer was that it was a clean operation, and. Uh, it was a closed case. When you review the toxicological information about silicosis, uh, silicosis is classified into three general classes, chronic, accelerated, and acute. Chronic or ordinary silicosis results from the long-term exposure of relatively low levels of crystalline silica dust in the atmosphere. Accelerated silicosis can occur with high exposure to high concentrations over a relatively short period of time. Acute silicosis can occur with exposures to very high levels of respired crystalline silica over a very short period of time, and this could be in the order of months. And the symptoms of acute silicosis are shortness of breath, fever, cough, and weight loss. And this is a fatal disease. I, I had just contacted the DEP to ask them, if, you know, if this was a safe situation, you know, if there was exposures. And, uh, you know, the first uh, agent who I talked to was very concerned about it all. I'd seen the pictures and was alarmed with it. And then two days later, the report was that it was a clean operation. The field investigator looked at it and, and, it, and it, they closed the case because it was a clean operation. Um, the stand is all over the place. Um, I don't know where that field investigator actually looked, but I have to beg to differ with him. I want to go to the school and apologize to every one of these kids for what my generation is doing to this earth, to their community. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Yuri. Well, there you have it, folks the Wyalusing Silica Transfer Station. You know the science, now you decide.